When I use those compound angle identities that I wrote on the blackboard. So the first one, number three, you have sine, you have sine x plus 45 degrees. Okay? Now, I want you to be aware that when you write metric, the information sheet, in terms of the angles, it doesn't use x or y. It uses alpha and beta. That's why I wrote my angles there in terms of alpha and beta. Okay? So what you do, I'm sure you can see that we have got sine here. Right? And there is an addition of two angles, which means we are using number what? Three. Number three. Okay? What that means is your x here is like your alpha there. And your beta there is like the 45 degrees. Okay? Please take note, we are just expand we are expanding and we are also simplifying if it's possible. So last year in grade 10, you did special angles. You should know that 45 degrees is a special angle, and it's equal to 1 over square root of 2. It's not okay. Generally, you don't write it as root 2 over 2. Okay? So if I do the expansion, okay, obviously I'll start with sine alpha which is x okay then remember the alpha is like x right so sine x times cos 45 degrees because beta is like 45 degrees right then i'll put my plus here then i'm going to repeat again i'm sure you can see that i've got cos now cos alpha so it now becomes cos x Okay, I started with sine x. I can't have sine x again then. It has to be the opposite. So it will be cos x times sine 45 degrees. Okay, I'm using number 3. Right? Then the question here says simplify if it's possible. Now, this expansion can be simplified because we know what sine 45 is, what cos 45 is. Right? So I can simplify and write this sine x times 1 over square root of 2 plus cos x times 1 over square root of 2. Okay? Which I can rewrite by factoring out 1 over root 2 is 1 over root 2 times sine x plus Okay, so that's the expansion in simplified form. Alright? Are you following that? Any question? Alright. Is there anybody who's got a question? Please, if you did the homework, just mark your way. Alright? If you didn't factorize here, like for example, let's say you're there. 1 over root 2 in front of the sine x and the 1 over root 2 in front of the cos x. It's, it's correct, but you can move on to the next step where you do the factorization. Right? Sorry? Yes, but you must look for special angles. Whenever you have, yes, whenever you have put an expansion in their special angles, then you need to simplify. Remember your special angles, 30 degrees, 45, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, okay? You have got 180, 270, and 360. Those are special angles, all right? Then number four. So number four, you have cos 30 degrees minus 5x. Cos... 30 degrees minus 5 x. Right? We are expanding and we, we also have to simplify. Can you pay attention? Pay attention. Right? Now, which compound angle identity can we use here? The first one, that's the mother. Okay? We have to use the first one because of the minus between the angles. Okay, because of this minus between the angles, we use the what? The first one. So our alpha always.
always, I, I'm, I'm going to encourage you to have a second color that you can use. So this 30 degrees, like alpha, the 5x is like what? Beta. Okay? Then, you expand. So that will be cos 30 degrees. Okay, this is the minus, obviously, so that will be times cos 5x. Okay, I'm sure you can see that beta is equivalent to 5x. Since there's a minus here, we put a plus like that. So that becomes plus sine 30 degrees times sine 5x. Right? Now we know that 10 degrees is a special angle. Right? Therefore, cos 30 is the same as square root of 3 over 2 times cos x cos 5x. Right? Plus sine 30 is the same as the half times sine 5x. Okay? Then you are done. So again, if you did the homework, just mark your way. If you made a mistake somewhere, then you can do the, the corrections quickly. Right? I'm using this form. Right? Move on. Right. For B, which questions did I give? B four B four. And then B seven. Okay. Now here we are now doing the reverse now. The question says write the following as a single trigonometric ratio. So we are now moving from the right hand side of these four identities towards the left hand side. Okay. Remember, the right hand side is a combination of two, three, of two trigonometric ratios, sine and cos. But the left hand side will only have cos only or sine only. Okay? So we need to simplify this until we get we, we get one trigonometric ratio. So number four, we have sine 43 degrees times cos 33 degrees minus cos 43 degrees right, times sine 33 degrees. Right? Now, among those four identities, which one do you think is the appropriate one? The last side. Huh? The last one. The last one because there's a minus here and there's a product of sine and cos. Okay? So we use the what? The last one, right? But I would, I would suggest here that you also identify your alpha and your beta. So, the 43 degrees is going to be alpha because it is the largest of the two angles. Okay? The 43 degrees is going to be alpha because it is the largest of the two angles. And cos in the 33 degrees is going to be beta. So, this is alpha. That's what? Beta. Since there is a minus here, okay, when we do the expansion, it will be equal to sine 43 degrees minus 33 degrees. Because alpha is equal to 43 degrees and beta is equal to 33 degrees. Yes. Yes, always. That comes from the proof. Okay, remember. For, for the proof, we said alpha minus beta. You don't start from the second term. You start from, you identify your alpha phase from the first term. Okay? You identify your alpha phase from the first term. Alpha and beta, you identify them from the first term. Right? So this will be equal to sine 10 degrees. Right? And then you are done. Now, if you are clever, you can check with your calculator. 
you can put this in your calculator, right? And get and get an answer as a decimal. And then put sign 10 degrees and also get the answer as a decimal. The answers must be equivalent. Okay? So if you put this whole expression in your calculator, you must get the same answer as putting sign 10 degrees in the calculator. Some questions may also require you to apply your knowledge of core ratios. Okay? Some questions require knowledge of core ratios. So at this stage, all your knowledge of trigonometry from grade 10 and especially grade 11 is required. Okay, any question? All right, don't have a question, then let's move on to number 7. So number 7 is sine x minus 20 degrees. times cos 20 okay then there is a plus and then you have the sine 20 Okay. So here, we also need to simplify until we get one trigonometric ratio. So first thing, identify your alpha and your beta. So in this case, let's consider that x minus 20 degrees as our alpha. Okay, And then the, the 20 degrees as beta. Right? If we do that, it means we are going to use which one of the four identities there? Number what? Number three, okay. We have used number three, so this will be equal to sine x minus 20 degrees plus 20 degrees, and the answer that you will get will be sine x. But minus 20 degrees plus 20 degrees gives you a zero, all right. Following that, yeah, don't be tempted here to expand this sign x minus 20 degrees. If you do that, you'll be complicating the question. Okay, you create some terms that are, that are not easy to simplify. All right, any question? All right, then for C, which, which question did I do? C3 huh? C3 and C6 C3 and C6 Right? Ooh. So Right If I didn't do a question under any exercise here then you must do it as part of your practice all right, so this will be sine beta plus 60 degrees minus cos beta minus 30 degrees. Okay, the question says simplify the following. Now, here we are not told much, the, the question just says simplify. So my, my suggestion, in order to do this question here, you expand the, I, the, this expression for sine, also expand that expression for cosine. Okay? That's the only way, using the appropriate identities among those four. I'm sure you can see that here there is a, there is a plus here. So we use number three here. Then there is a minus there. So we use number one. So let me do the expansion. It's going to be a long expansion. So this will be sine theta times cos 60 degrees, right? Plus sine 60 degrees times cos theta. Please be aware that 
I generally, in my case, I prefer to start with sign for the identities for sign there. I prefer to start with sign gen and red. But because of multiplication, you can put cos beta first, then sign 60 degrees. It's the same thing. Okay, but in my case, over the years, I prefer to start with sign. Okay? Then from here, we have got this minus, so it will be minus, then you open the bracket. Okay? Then you expand using number one, so that would be cos beta, okay, times cos 30 degrees plus. Now, be very careful when it comes to this identity for cos. If there's a minus here between the angles, then there must be a plus there. Be very careful of that. It's a common mistake which learners do of, put, of putting a minus here instead of a, instead of a what? A plus. That's a very, very common mistake. And it can happen without you knowing that it is happening. Right? Then sine beta times sine 30 degrees. Then you close the bracket. Okay? So I have expanded using number three and number one. All right? Then I need to simplify this. Now be aware that we have got 60 degrees here and 30 degrees. They are special angles. So your knowledge of special angles from grade 10 is required here. So this will become, now cos 60 is a half. So I can write this as a half times sine beta plus another Okay, that would be square root of 3 over 2 times cos beta, right? Then, before I include this minus here, right, I have got cos theta there, which is also equal to square root of 3 over 2. So that would be minus square root of 3 over 2 cos beta. And then another minus, a half, sine beta. Okay? So I've expanded and I've simplified using uh, my knowledge of special angles. Now, at this stage, you have to be a guru of special angles. You should be able to see that there's a special angle here, then you simplify. Now, let's see now what, what happened. We have got a half sine beta and we have got a minus a half sine beta. So these two, they give us zero, right? Then we have square root of 3 over 2 times cos beta minus another square root of 3 over 2 cos beta. So these two will also give us a what? A zero. Therefore, our answer, our answer will be zero. So what do you want the whole bracket? What do you mean? Like what do you expand with? So why do you want the whole bracket? Did it say minus yeah, because, cos beta? Because, because this, this minus, it affects the whole expansion. This minus it affects the whole expansion. So the expansion must be put inside the bracket because this minus here, it affects cos beta minus 30 degrees. And the expansion of cos beta minus 30 is cos beta times cos 30 plus sine beta times sine 30. Okay, so this minus here is very important. Any question? All right, so let's do number six. So square root of three, cos, so that's number six. Square root of three, cos, in the open bracket, that's x minus 30. Minus cos x minus 30. Cos x minus 16. Right? So again, here we are going to expand. Okay? 
please be aware that for the first term, okay, which is what cos x minus 30 degrees, this square root of 3 here is going to multiply the expansion. This square root of 3 here is going to multiply the expansion. So because of this minus, okay, because of this minus, we are going to use number 1 because of that minus. Okay, so because of that minus and that minus there, we are going to use number 1, which is the mother of the four identities. Right? So this will be the square root of 3 times, please be aware that this is the same as square root of 3 times cos x minus 30. So we just have to multiply the expansion of cos x minus 30 degrees by square root of 3. Okay, so that will be cos x. So that will be cos x times cos 30 degrees, right? There's a minus there, obviously we put a plus as the right hand side there. So this becomes sine x times sine 30 degrees. Okay? Then we close the bracket. That's the first expansion. The second expansion, we need to take into account this minus here. Okay? So, the expansion of cos x minus 60 degrees is going to be multiplied by a negative 1. That's what this minus means. Right? So, we end up at minus, then we open the bracket. That will be cos x times cos 60 degrees, right? Plus sine x times sine 60 degrees. Right? Now, we have got special angles as well, 30 degrees and 60. Therefore, this becomes square root of 3 times cos 30. That's square root of 3 over 2. So that will be square root of 3 over 2 times cos x plus sine 30 is a half. So that will be a half times sine 8. Okay? I hope you are following that. Then, inside the bracket, we are going to have a half times cos x because cos 60 is a half plus sine 60 square root of 3 over 2 times sine x. Alright? Now, I'm going to remove the bracket now. Okay? So if I start with the first bracket, square root of 3 times square root of 3, that will give me a 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives me a 3. Okay? Okay. Those who are sleeping, can you wake up this line class? You had the whole weekend to rest. Okay? Because I wanted to rationalize the denominator. Okay. Do you know that do you know that square root of two is an irrational number? Right? When you say irrationalize means we are converting an irrational number to a rational number. Okay? We are converting an irrational number to a rational number. Okay, so to rationalize this denominator here, we have to multiply it by square root of 2 because if I multiply square root of 2 by square root of 2, it gives me a 2. And the 2 is a rational number. And just what? Using a calculator? I'm not supposed to use the calculator. <laughs> You're not supposed to use the calculator. <laughs> okay. If you use the calculator, we will see that you use the calculator. 
All right. Sorry. Everyone, please be reminded. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? It's very important. It's very important for you to remember that you did grade 10. Three. You were taught special angle. You did grade 11. You were taught special angle. Right? Now we are in metric. I cannot treat you like it's your first time to do a special angle. What, what you can do if you forgot, go back to your grade 10 knots, your grade 11 knots. Okay? At metric level, we don't have time to go back to the basics of special angles. No, but I'm not saying teachers, so I just write them down. Okay. Can you write them? I'm going to take them. Can you write them down some? Why do I have a about this? All right, sign 30 is what we have. Can you can you stop talking? Sine theta is a half. Cos theta is square root of three over two. All right now, how do you get tan theta? Tan theta you divide sine over what? Cos. So you 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 don't have to memorize what tan theta is. All you have to do is. We know that sine 30 degrees over cos 30 degrees is equal to tan 30 degrees. And what is sine 30? It's a half divided by cos 30, which is square root of 3 over 2. I'm, I'm showing you a technique which can help you here. To not memorize. If you know sine, you know cos, you should not stress about tan. Because tan is got sine over what? Over cos. Are you following what I'm saying? So this will be a half times 2 over square root of 3, so you get 1 over root 3. So tan 30 is 1 over square root of 3. Okay? I don't need to memorize what tan 30 is, but I just have to know sine 30 and what? Cos 30. Alright? Then let's move on to uh, 60 degrees. Right? Sine 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Sine 60 is square root of 3 over 2. Cos 60 is a half. Cos 60 is a half. So what is tan 60? Tan 60 is going to be equal to sine 60 divided by cos 60. Okay, sine 60, that's square root of 3 over 2 divided by cos 60, which is a half. So we get half there, and this will give you square root of 3. So tan 60 is square root of 3. Alright? Then let's move on to, to 45 degrees. In fact, I was supposed to move from 10 to 45 degrees, but I did by vice But sine 45, sine 45 is 1 over square root of 2. Sine 45 is 1 over square root of 2. Cos 45 is also 1 over square root of 2. Um, sine 45 and cos 45 are the same. Okay? They are both 1 over root 2. Since sine 45 is equal to cos 45, what does that mean when it comes to tan? It's one. it's one. Because sine 45 is equivalent to cos 45. So tan 45 is a 1. Alright? Then, the rest, if you want, you can use the calculator. Like the 90, the 180, you can just punch in your calculator. 270, you can punch in your calculator. 360, you can do it in your calculator. Alright? Okay, let's move on. All right, so let's do number three. Do I still have time? Wow. My time is almost. But I can do it quickly, okay? I can do it quickly. 
I can do it quickly, yes. Yes, I can do it. Find 50 times cos 10. So number three, find 50 degrees. <laughs> Are you following there? Like, yeah, please be aware that some of you are playing around. I can see. But don't worry. Don't worry. Next term, it will bite you back. If you are not serious now, don't think that you end up having time to start catching up. There is no time. Because the work is piling up. The work is piling up. So it's better for you to be up to date with everything at that moment. You you just sit like you are gurus now. I Oh, my God. 
The way which I gave you. Not Alright, can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? Can you check out your metric? I just want to see what you want. Hey, if you are talking, can you be quiet, please? Can you be quiet? I'm not checking if your answers are correct. I'm checking if you are tempted. 